Hello, my name is Martin Unwin from Surrey Satellite Technology Limited, and I will be presenting outline of the Hydro GNSS GNSS reflectometry scout mission. First, I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors and their institutions. You can see them listed below, plus the support that we've had, we've received from the European Space Agency. Hydrology is the science concerned with the properties of the Earth's water, especially the changes with respect to the land. Water is a natural resource that is vital to climate, weather and life on Earth. It is present in or on the land in the form of soil moisture, wetlands and rivers, snow and ice and vegetation. Knowledge of the land water content across the globe is vital for understanding the climate and is targeted by recent international policies. Soil moisture knowledge is needed to predict agricultural yields and assess flood risks. Behaviour of the permafrost is being watched carefully as thawing can release large quantities of greenhouse gases. Biomass is the volume of forest material which is one of the globe's carbon dioxide sinks. Wetlands are again a source of greenhouse gases and it is particularly difficult to measure under forest canopies. The models that people use for climate and weather forecasting need measurements that can be fed into the models. So earth system models for the climate or numerical weather prediction for weather forecasting. GNSS reflectometry is a relatively new technique where signals are used from GNSS satellites, GPS and Galileo, and the reflections are collected from low earth orbit. There are more than a hundred sources of L-band signals being transmitted from high orbit and they're collected in a forward specular methodology, which is in effect by static radar. There've been some key in-orbit demonstrations, UK DMC launched in 2004, Tech Demosat in 2014, and the Cygnus constellation, 2016. The applications for wind and wave sensing has been fairly well established. Cryospheric applications have been demonstrated with Tech Demosat 1. Ocean altimetry looks promising, but it's challenging. And the concept that we're addressing with hydro GNSS is land applications. Hydro GNSS is two small satellites which will be picking up reflections off, in particular, off the land to sense a number of variables, permafrost, biomass, soil moisture, and wetlands. Incidentally, if this video doesn't come out very well, it's available on YouTube if you look up HydroGNSS. The GPS and Galileo satellites are transmitting all the time from high orbits, 20 to 24,000 kilometers, and the signals are reflected continually off the surface of the Earth. So a satellite in low Earth orbit is able to look for these signals and collect them. Here's an example of delay Doppler maps from uh, Tech Demos at one. It can penetrate all weather, uh, these reflections. Now, the particular uh, variables that we're targeting are over the land. So, for example, soil moisture is valuable for climate, agriculture and weather forecast. Wetlands, and the clever thing about uh, reflectometry is can pick up signals through the vegetation. Biomass, permafrost, and there are secondary uh, products over the ice and over wind speed over the ocean. It will be running 100% of the time, so all that measurements, all the measurements will be available. So the two satellites will gather their, uh, their measurements and you can see how the tracks build up over time, day one, day two, day three, um, all the way up until we get full coverage of globe every 15 days and higher coverage at the, at the, near the poles. So that's a, a visual demonstration of hydro GNSS. The thing that uh, HydroGNSS is targeting is uh, essential climate vi uh, variables, ECVs, defined by Global Climate Observing System. These are soil moisture, biomass, freeze-thaw state, and inundation. Now, the uh, freeze-thaw is a characteristic of permafrost, uh, and the inundation is a parameter within the soil moisture, but it also captures wetlands, which is um, the CCI identifies as a primary source of greenhouse gases. HydroGNSS is a candidate for the ESA Scout program, which will be a 30 million euro mission with a launch in 2024. 
and it employs GNSS reflectometry, which is a relatively novel and it's complementary and at the same time unique sensing technique. And the Hydro GNSS addresses a shortage in L band measurements that is foreseen in a few years' time. The, the instrument itself is, is a derivative of the instrument that's flown on TDS and Cygnus missions. It's compatible with Galileo and GPS, and it's reconfigurable in orbit, possibly for future GNSS systems. It will have an ADO antenna of around 13 dBi gain, which is similar to TDS and uh, Cygnus. It's dual polarized though, and it will have the capability of dual frequency. Uh, the, the instrument will be collecting onboard uh, one hertz delay Doppler maps plus an additional coherent channel at a higher rate. It will also have the capability for raw sampling in both polarizations and frequencies to explore the new signals. The platform is the SSTL21, which is a 40 kilogram variant of the SSTL Micro standard platform. It's going to be a two year mission, but with a th possible three year extension, so we're targeting five years. The, uh, the attitude will be well determined by a star tracker and three axis control. There's plenty of prop propellant to, to phase the satellites, also do collision avoidance and end of life disposal. It will be commissioned and commanded from Guildford um, with a high data rate down to Svalbard. Payload data ground segment will be built upon what we did for TDS with Mervis.org and level one and level two data will be disseminated via ESA Earth Online. Constellation is two satellites giving global coverage every 15 days, but it's suitable for upscaling for larger constellation to achieve daily coverage. The precursors to Hydrogen SS, I'll just touch upon these. There's Tech Demosat 1, launched in 2014, Cygnus in 2016, most recently, Dot 1 launched last year, and we've just issued a press release with the uh, uh, delay Doppler amps captured in orbit. So to finish off this presentation, uh, HydroGNSS comprises two satellites to measure essential climate variables using GNSS reflectometry. We're using established techniques and new techniques, um, which will uh, bring new measurements to the world. There's, it, the data will be released freely. There's a large international community of scientists and users. And it's one of the four shortlisted candidates. Mission selection is expected in November 2020 with a mission kickoff in 2024. Thank you very much.